All right, so we have a pretty big construction update today. I got some awesome shots of the construction site from various locations. I went up high, I went down low, I'm kidding. But I did go up high, I got some great shots. I'm excited to share them with you. So let's just get this started. So right off the bat, I wanted to go over this area. So this area has a lot of markers throughout it. And the markings are interesting because they're very small locations and I don't think they have anything to do with the coaster. I actually think they have a lot to do with a new themed area. I think this pathway is going to become kind of like the Chilkoot Trail or like maybe the little village at the bottom of the trail or the mountain. I think it's going to have a lot of Canadian theming and it's gonna look really nice. I think they're gonna go after somewhat of a simu similar look to that at the themed area at Cedar Point. Um, and I'm excited for that. So on the, the pathway, as you, you're seeing, there's some markings on the pathway, and I think that they um, are for landscaping. So if you look at them closely, they almost look like um, what could be a bridge if the tunnel, second tunnel, or if there is a second tunnel goes there. And then this almost looks like a garden area or something, um, like kind of like rounding out the path if they were, similar to that of Val Raven. Um, and that's my general guess. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, um, I, the Canadian Canadian fencing's there, but I'm going to be honest, I'm surprised that the pathway wasn't repaired. Um, it, I'm, it is a pretty big tripping hazard, so I was kind of shocked to see that still there. Like I, like, I saw it and I still like would stumble on it here and there, so I was kind of surprised to see that and it not be fenced off for their own protection to prevent anyone from tripping, just because that is a tripping hazard, and I was just a little bit surprised. Um, so here we are, I got another look um, from a different angle of the columns or what marking uh, these um, pylons that mark the footers. It goes, it ranges from like number seven that I've seen on the construction site all the way up to 98 or 99 and their left and right side, um, which is extremely interesting. As you saw in my video, Val Raven only has 51 support columns. This coaster goes all the way up to 94, 99 support columns left and right, which is insane. Um, so again, I get it, I get it. There's a lot of naysayers out there. There's a lot of naysayers. This isn't gonna be a dive coaster. So, I mean, this isn't gonna be a giga dive coaster, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I would be like not on board with that idea either if I wasn't seeing what I'm seeing. But there is a lot of evidence suggesting that this has the potential to be a giga dive coaster. And I am crossing my fingers that this is a really big coaster coming to Canada's Wonderland. Um, so I want to go over this area. As you see, there's some footers back here that don't have the footings or the supports, um, the uh, ability to hook up a support to them. Um, and that, in my opinion, is going to be near miss elements or theming attached to um, either the coaster or um, Timberwolf Falls, whatever it ends up being. But there is about two or three of those footings back here that don't have the ability to hook up a support to. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what kind of theming is attached to those with the coaster. Maybe a near miss element, maybe like kind of like um, a mine shaft you blow through or something, or maybe even some rock work, who knows? Although I don't think rock work needs footings. Um, usually footings are for like, kind of like a, a structure that's going on top. Um, now this is where it gets really interesting. So back here, um, <laughs> as you can see right away, there's a giant, like almost like pioneer water tower, like old Canadian theming style water tower that arrived. And it's got some like wire on it that it's like very authentic and really well done. Um, I was really impressed if you look closely, I know it's really hard. My camera zoomed in epically, like all the way to the max. So it's harder to hold it still when you're that zoomed in because it's trying to focus on anything and everything. Um, but there's a lot of Canadian theming that's arrived back there now. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point, it's confirmed that it's going to be a Canadian themed coaster. Um, now that doesn't rule out Ziz necessarily, so stay tuned for that video. Um, so we have oil barrels, we have regular barrels, um, you have a water tower, you have like fake log trees, you have the log benches. Um, and look at all the rebar cages there. So look at all that rebar that is back there waiting to be turned. I, like, this coaster has so many footers. Like, I'm so shocked. Like, I, I'm like, what is it going to do? Where is it going to go? Like, what are these footers for? I know not necessarily all footers, as we've seen, are for the coaster. They're for theming as well. So I'm super excited to see what they're going to do with this coaster. Um, ignore that. That's not winter fence. But there, so that's back in the forest. So there are a lot of Canadian barrels back there. A lot. And I say Canadian barrels. They're not Canadian barrels. I'm just saying that for, like, the general theming. Um, I will say there are definitely some crates back there for the coaster and um, it says what the coaster is on them, but I can't get close enough to say what the coaster is. 
Um, but yeah, there are a lot of crates back there that should probably be covered up a little bit better. <laughs> um, but if a hundred uh, times zoom camera can't get it to it, then um, I think they're safe for now. Um, but yeah, I'm just showing you guys some of the Canadian theming back there, the, um, the tree work, um, lots of trees, and this nicely themed water tower. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be a teaser, if it's gonna go in the area, who knows, but it's definitely brand new. And you're gonna see in a second some military vehicle that arrived there as well. And I think this is for Halloween Haunt, I think. Like, uh, it looks like maybe they might go with like, um, you know, like a zombie type haunt maze again, because I saw some biohazard um, barrels back there as well. So who knows? Because um, that was a little interesting, and I don't think they can fit that vehicle into the theming of this new coaster. Um, but there are the crates I was talking about. No, you can't see what the coaster is, <laughs> or at least not you guys. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff going on back there. Super excited for the teaser campaign to start. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely forecasting that the teaser campaign will probably start around Canada Day. Um, probably early July, if not. Um, so we're getting close. We're getting a lot closer to the teaser campaign. Um, that building that we saw in previous is still there, wrapped up in tarp, um, ready to go for whatever it is. Again, I do think it's a teaser campaign, but this isn't even the best footage. So um, again, there's a lot of rebar cages back there. There's crates with bolts in them that say what the coaster is. There is Canadian theming galore back there. And um, you have... <laughs> Again, just a ton of stuff back there ready to go for whether it's the teasing campaign or the coaster itself. This coaster is on its way to being a world-class coaster. Just let me tell you that. I'm super excited. Um, so nothing too exciting back here, just a lot of electrical work that seem, appears to be done. Um, so whatever this coaster is, it has a lot of electrical that had to be installed. And um, just a good look at some of the footers in the area. So we now know that these are those easy pour um foundation um i guess like castings for like what could be a footer um and uh yeah here you have column 71 i believe was on that column 71 or column 7 for the lift hill i have no idea um but yeah there are a lot of footers back there for the lift hill because i now know where the lift hill is located it's located right here it'll go up over this pathway it's a little far, and I'm just showing it in correlation to Splashworks. So there's that footer for the top of the lift hill just over to the left. And that's how um, we got our measurements of 105 meters approximately of as a length. Again, length for the lift hill. And the coaster will dive into the tunnel, do its little inland loop. It will head on over to Timberwolf, do a special element that you will see in our um, recreation or uh, prediction video that's going to come out next week. Um, we have someone working on it. We're making it really good for you guys. And it does a turn and it does its secondary element and it heads on over here. Now this is where we cannot predict what the coaster does. There are just too many footers here for us to even begin predicting, but we have a, a definite um, pretty damn close uh, prediction for the first bit of the layout, let me tell you. So hopefully you guys are getting excited for that. And, uh, and at the end of the video, I'm going to discuss something about Patreon and how we're going to do some of those cool videos um, with that. Don't worry, it's not going to impact our regular channel. Um, but yeah, here's just some of the footers up close. This is footer number 57. And then as you saw in them, they're starting to sand them down because a lot of them are rough shaped like these and they were sanding them down and getting them ready for what looks like vertical construction. So again, I do think that vertical construction will begin sometime in July, whether that be mid-July or end of July, um, that's when I'm guessing that you'll see supports arriving on site. So you'll probably see stuff arriving early July um, and vertical construction, mid vertical construction starting mid-July or end of July. Um, now, as you can see, we do know where the um, transfer track and holding area will be next to the station. Um, you can tell by the foundation itself and the uh, footers. And then you have it turn out of the station, go down towards Mindbuster, and then you have it heading up towards Timberwolf Falls, about it meets halfway there, turns towards the tunnel and dives down. Um, I, as you can, I tried to see if any pylons in this area had markings on them, but they didn't because they're already done. So why would they need it? Um, but yeah, 
definitely. Um, so let me see which one this is. So this is column 81 left. So again, Valraven has 51 columns left and right, 51 left and right. Um, and this coaster, from what we're seeing, has 81 columns left and right, anywhere from 80s to the 90s columns, um, which is extremely interesting. So again, I'm not pulling this Giga rumor out of thin air. There are definitely signs of this coaster being a very massive coaster. Um, whether that means I fully believe it myself, I don't. Uh, again, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not throwing it out there and jumping on the Giga bandwagon myself fully. Um, I'm just presenting what I see and what I think um, for discussion and topics. So definitely feel free to comment down below. Do you guys honestly think, with all this evidence, that we could be looking at the first park to have two Gigas again, Gigas, two Gigas, and the first park to have a Giga dive coaster? Um, I, I'm honestly like fingers crossed. This would be amazing for Wonderland um, and amazing for Cedar Fair as a whole. And it would definitely turn Canada's Wonderland into a destination park. I mean, it's already almost there. They just need that extra little oomph to get it over that edge. Um, but yeah, definitely lots of work. Um, as you can see there in my other video, when I was filming them, they're definitely turning off the water main. That blue painting is for the water and people commenting down below are definitely right. They're shutting it off and on. So it looks like basically they do construction Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Thursday, they turn the water on. So the water is off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because the splash works. And then they turn it back on and they leave it running Thursday, Friday, so they can they know it's working and they can fix it if there were to be a problem that arised. That is my guess for that. So Thursday, Friday, they turn the water back on and construction stops, which is why we see construction stopping on Thursday, Friday. So that makes sense. Um, but feel free to comment down below if you feel like that I may be wrong with that, because I know there's a couple people in here that work in construction and may be able to tell me. So as you can see in this um, little clip, you can see them working on more rebar cages. Um, they started making more again. And then in the back there, you can see column 78 left. So again, the columns are very interesting. Actually, yeah, that's definitely column 78. Um, it's, it's just like there's there's 78, there, there's high numbers mixed with low numbers, like in the same area. So who knows what this coast is gonna do? I do know the lift hill goes over the co course. So that could be why we have low numbers mixed with high numbers. Um, but yeah, just lots of work um, and no signs of them slowing down. I, I think the reason they don't do construction on Thursday, Friday again is because they want to make sure the water is working for splash ricks, so they turn it back on on Thursday. Anyways, here's a look at some of the they, the refurbishments they're doing to the um, splash works building. Um, so there it looks a lot nicer than here. <laughs> so they're slowly um, refurbishing the splash works building, making it look more fresh and it looks awesome. Um, super proud to see them do that. So again, this is that pathway I was talking about before. Definitely going to see some major upgrades to it. I'm super excited about that. I think we're going to see a whole new area here. Um, guys, comment down below. What do you honestly think they're going to put in this area? Do you think you're going to they're going to make a little tiny, like almost like Pioneer Village, like Yukon Village down here? Um, or, or what do you, do you think it's related to the coaster? Or do you possibly think it's related to a Timberwolf Falls upgrade? Definitely comment down below what you guys think. I'm super curious because I have no idea. I'm just making a, um, assumptions and guesses for pure speculation and uh, discussion. So definitely feel free to comment down below what you guys honestly think this area could be for. There's definitely something happening here. Um, lots of construction mar construction markers um, and lots of activity as they've replaced fences. There's electrical outlets in there and there's plumbing back there as well now over on the uh, Whitewater Canyon side. So here's the view from Splashworks. Um, and you're gonna get a look um, from up on top of a tower in just a sec, and it's a great shot. Shows you what they're doing for that pre-lift almost. But yeah, there's that um, transfer track area and the uh, station area up close, and then a bunch of footers off in the distance. And then you have some electrical and then the um, kind of freshly poured concrete footers. Again, they usually take about 28, 28 days to dry from what I've been told before they'll start putting any like kind of pressure or weight on them. So a lot of these were done. So here's that look of the pre-lift area. And I'm going to show you a, a view of what Val Ravens looks like to kind of show you what's going to happen in this area. So you have the dugout area, you have the small flat area, and then you have a really deep section for the kind of like B&M lift hills kind of act as supports themselves now. And that's where that deep section is um, probably going to hold that like main support of the lift. 
and then the other bit will be like the footings for that pre lift hill section as you see there um, so definitely getting closer to vertical construction I would say we're about 30 to 50 days away from vertical construction kind of starting if I had to take a wild guess um, but yeah this is some great shots of the transfer track and station area and then the turn and pre-lift um, and this is how we were able to kind of come up with our like guess of where the lift hill is going to head. You can see what supports are for the lift hill and what supports are for the brake run um, just by the sheer size. And you can see which supports are turns. So usually, the, again, the rectangular sections are for inversions, turns, or just areas that need to support side by side. Um, and then you have that foundation there that looks kind of like a home foundation. That's probably either the station or transfer track. Usually the station actually doesn't rest on a foundation like that. But this is that pre-lift section I was talking about. So this is Val Raven at Cedar Point. Um, and that's probably what's going to be built in that area. And I say probably, and I mean pretty much that's what's going to be built in that area you see right there. Um, yeah, so we do know that the station is located where it's located. It has the turn out of the station and it heads into the pre-lift and then the pre-lift and the lift head up towards the halfway point on Skyriders Plano land and turns towards the tunnel. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's it for this area. Um, I really love when Splashworks is open because it provides you with some great shots of the construction area as a whole. And then you get to kind of see where like these footers are going to go. So here you have column seven. That's definitely for the lift hill. So, you know, the lift hill supports stretch out far. So that makes sense for the location of it. Um, and then the other one is located closer to the lift hill. So that definitely adds up. Um, so again, I mean, construction could start any moment. Anyways, in terms of uh, Patreon, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, big update. Um, not much happened between Thursday and Friday and Saturday, but it definitely got some great views of the construction site and a better idea of what the coaster is going to look like. So a couple of things. We're working on a uh, our final prediction layout for the dive coaster. So again, Amusement Insiders, we do believe this is going to be a dive coaster, and we do strongly believe it's going to be a giga dive coaster. So stay tuned for that prediction layout. We will release the prediction layout and just that one day earlier on Patreon. So feel free to go join us on Patreon. We did just launch, launch Patreon. It's a dollar a month to be on our Patreon. And then there's premium services just for like monthly gifts and such like that. But anyone who does the one dollar a month Patreon will get that exclusive content. And they will also get exclusive access in our Discord to have one on one conversations with me. Um, and then there's also the five dollar a month one where you can come hang out with me at the park for a whole day um, and I'll take you kind of like on a tour of what I normally do and such and such. And then there's a $25 one where you get like a free merch pack each month and then all of the above. Um, anyways, I did this just because I do spend a lot of time doing um, this activities. I go to the park every day and it would be nice to, you know, kind of support me along the way as I, I, I really do put a lot of work into this and I hope you guys really enjoy it. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't, and share this for those that um, maybe don't know about what's going on in Canada's Wonderland. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.